All right, here we go. Chapter 1, Day 1 Notes. We're going to start off by talking about sets of numbers. Uh, since this is the first video, just keep this in mind. Um, I'm not going to be pausing because videos are limited to 15 minutes. So to get through a video, I uh, sometimes will go through some of the examples rather quickly. Remember, you get to pause this video at any time you feel the need. So we're going to start with uh, sets of numbers. Complex. Complex numbers basically include every single number that you can think of. But from there, it breaks off to either real numbers or imaginary numbers. Every number that you can think of is going to be real except imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers is like taking the square root of a negative number, which you have been told is not possible. Then real numbers will break off to either rational or irrational numbers. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. But irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction. Examples would be like the square root of 3 or pi. Then we have integers, whole numbers, and natural counting numbers. Natural counting numbers would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all positive, no zero. Whole numbers would be your natural numbers plus zero. Zero is included in the whole number group. And finally, integers is your natural, your whole, plus the negative numbers as well. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And the, none of those last three groups, integers, whole, or natural, will include any fractions or decimals or anything like that. So what you're going to do with those from time to time is you're going to be asked to classify them. So if you can memorize that chart, it'll be very helpful. Um, here's how. So that first one, 0 .05005, it's not a repeating decimal. So this is an irrational number. So what else is it? Because we have to list all the sets. Well, go to irrational and just follow your table up till you get to complex. So irrational, real, and complex. Why don't you guys try B and C? Feel free to pause. So 21 divided by 7 is 3. 3 is a natural number. So if we go back to our chart, we'll start here and we will hit every number group on the way back up to complex. So you would just have to list natural, whole, integers, rational, real, and complex. Your last example is the square root of negative 25. So again for this example we would just go find imaginary and follow it back up to complex and that last example would be imaginary and complex. So that's how we classify numbers in a given group. Properties of real numbers. Here's another example of where it would be great for you to just pause the video, complete your chart, and then listen to me talk about them. Closure. A and B are real numbers, and then we're going to perform some addition or multiplication, and we're going to see if they remain in a given set. That is going to be a lot easier to understand once we get to some examples in number two. Commutative property of addition and multiplication. Basically, it does not matter which order you choose to add or multiply two numbers, you're going to get the same result. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is also 5 did not matter which way we added them. The associative property for addition and multiplication basically says it doesn't matter which way you group numbers using addition or multiplication. The identity element. In addition, what can we add to a number that will give us that exact same number? The answer is zero. So a number plus zero is always going to be that same number. In multiplication, what can we multiply a number by to get the same number? The answer is one. Inverse, in addition, a number plus what gives you zero? And it is the opposite of that number. So two plus a negative two will give you zero. 
in multiplication, it is the reciprocal. 2 times 1 half is equal to 1. The distributive property, you know what the distributive property is. You just have to multiply A to both B and C, and you will get AB plus AC. So here's number two, where you will understand closure a little bit better. So we just have to answer yes or no and give a counterexample. So basically, you just want to pick a few numbers and test it in the given category. So are even integers closed under subtraction? Basically, take a couple of even integers and test it. What is 10 minus 6? It equals 4. Even minus even equals even. Maybe pick a couple other, give it a try. In this case, yes they are closed. Are odd integers closed under addition? So for this all you need to do is pick a couple of odd integers, add them together and see if you get an odd number. And you will find out that you don't. An odd plus an odd is even. So since we don't get an even, or since we don't get an odd, we get an even instead, then integers are not closed under addition. So quickly give it a try for C. Pause the video. Are the odd integers closed under multiplication? Pick two. So how about five times three? We get 15, and the answer is yes. Okay. So moving on to number three. You're exchanging $500 for Mexican pesos. The exchange rate is six pesos per dollar. Assume that you use other money to pay for the exchange fee. So how much will you receive in pesos? All you have to do is multiply your $500 times six pesos per dollar and you get 3000 pesos. Remember to show your units in this class. If you don't show your units when necessary, you will lose points. So when you return, you only have 270 pesos left. How much will you get back in dollars? You take your 270 pesos, and we are going to divide that by 6 this time, because it takes 6 pesos to make a dollar, and we will have $45. Here's some terminology that you're going to need to know for this year. Um, some of these are not broken down into definitions, more of an example. Once you see it, it'll help you understand. Um, a base, exponent, and power. That's all pretty much a group together. The base is 3. The exponent in this example is 4. Now if we take this whole thing, 3 to the 4th power together, that's a power. Okay. So now we're going to move to variable. You guys know what a variable is. It's a letter that represents a number in some sort of an equation or expression. An expression versus an equation. An expression does not have an equal sign. So an expression would be 2x plus 5. That's an expression. But this entire thing, 2x plus 5 equals 15, that would be an example of an equation, because we have an equal sign. No equal sign is an expression. A mathematical model. That's an expression that re uh, represents real life. Next four, term, coefficient, constant, and like terms. Two x squared plus three x plus four x plus five. Those are all examples of terms. So this expression here has four terms. A coefficient. A coefficient is the number that comes in front of a variable. Okay? So for example, uh, the coefficient of x squared would be 2. 
So the coefficient would be the number in front of a variable. Constant, example of your constant is no variable, just a number all by itself. And like terms, like terms would be 3x and 4x. We can combine them to 7x, but since they both have the same variable x, they are considered like terms. Now an identity uh, basically equates two equal expressions. Something else that's not new to you would be the order of operations. Uh, you've probably heard the phrase PEMDAS, which helps you memorize. Um, the order of operations. First thing we do are parentheses followed by exponents and then to multiplication and division and then addition and subtraction come last. Now multiplication, division, addition, subtraction they do not have to go in that specific order it's just as we read from left to right. So simplify an expression and write the answer in descending order. So you always want to start as close to the inside of a bunch of sets of parentheses as possible. So the first thing you are going to do for this example is you're going to distribute that negative a. So we're going to start out with 7a minus 9 minus a times 8 minus 11a minus a squared. And all we did was distribute this negative a. Now we're going to do it again with this negative a. We're going to distribute that to all three on the inside. So 7a minus 9 minus 8a plus 11a squared plus a cubed. And the last thing we need to do is distribute this negative inside to all of that. We get 7a minus 9 plus 8a minus 11a squared minus a cubed. Write it in descending order. Final answer, negative a cubed minus 11a squared plus 15a minus 9. Our last couple examples. Write an expression for the area of a figure. And then we're going to evaluate with the given value for our variable n. Area of a triangle is half the base times height. Okay, so half the base is n plus 10. The height is n. And now we can simplify it a little bit. All I did was distribute this. And then all we have to do is substitute in 40 for the number n. And we will get the answer of 1,000 units squared. So this last example we have one minute and 15 seconds for before I run out of time. So basically what you want to do is you want to read this word problem and then you want to come up with an expression to help us find the number of miles that will appear on the odometer after you have owned the car for four years. So after you go through the information, the miles is going to be equal to 15,000 miles per year plus the original odometer reading of 37,148. Have it for four years. So we're going to substitute 4 for x. A little bit of calculation and we have 97,148 miles. Remember to not forget your units. And that's it. We're barely going to finish this one on time. Remember, the purpose of these videos is so you can watch them at home as many times as you need to. Stop, pause, rewind, whatever it is. I will see you tomorrow.